show about sports by people who love sports. Welcome to Sports Isolated. Here's your host, Callum Duck. Hi hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Sports Isolated. Today on the show we are very lucky to have Salim Muhammad, who is the youth uh, coordinator at the Western Bulldogs Community Foundation. Salim, thank you so much for your time. How you been? I've uh, been good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we'll fire straight into the question. So can you please tell us about your career pathway and how you ended up at the Western Bulldogs? Yeah, definitely. I think um, my career pathway starts um, nice and early before I even knew that it even started. Um, I, I remember going to school, I was really always um, keen on working with young people, helping them out. Um, like my little cousin, if, if he wanted to um, something to eat, I'd, I'd use my money to buy him something. So that whole sort of youth was always a big passion of mine. Um, but then working edu- education wise um, into university, I studied sciences. Um, so I was studying pharmaceutical science and health information management. But my core passion really lied within community, within youth and within sports. Um, so I've always kind of kept that close to me. Um, at the age of 19, I started coaching at my local soccer club, Hattleby Star Soccer Club, which is about, I'd say 200 people um, max. So I'm not the biggest club um, uh, in, the, in the world. So I started volunteering there when I was 19, uh, coached my first season. We won the league and we won states um, that year. And then after that, I was like, okay, let me just push myself and, and, and try more things. And um, next year, I stepped up to become the, join the committee at the age of 20 um, and then became a junior coordinator the following season. And then before I knew, I was, I was developing the whole program for the, for the youth, um, for, for all the junior teams and ha- handing out sort of handbooks for all the coaches to show them, okay, this is how you meant to coach um, and all that kind of stuff. And I got spotted by uh, Melbourne Victory Football Club um, as, as they went out to all their community partner clubs um, for a vacancy they had. And um, luckily through the interview process, I actually got the role as a community sports coordinator. And my role was generally... Um, to de- develop programs, uh, deliver out at schools, um, also to work within the diverse communities. So the Sassoonese community in Dandenong, the, the, the Afghan community in Peckenham, um, and, and kind of engage those communities as well through sports and uh, tr- trying to ease their integration to the Australian culture through that. Um, I did that for a year and it was absolutely um, amazing experience to have that sort of foot in the door in, in, in the sports industry and in youth. And I kind of took it with both hands and ran with it. Um, after that year, I worked at the Islamic Council of Victoria um, on a program called Empower Muslim Youth. Uh, it's a program where we basically tackle unemployment within young um, Muslims. And it's kind of through resume writing, um, interview preparations, um, helping them uh, pay for short courses, uh, buy uniforms, um, and, and through that process kind of tackle the unemployment rate within the city of Hume. Um, I did that for nine months, and through that process, I was also a part of the Victoria Police Youth Multi-Faith Committee. Um, and in that time, it was, it was a part-time role, so with that spare time, I decided to to start my own program. I uh, founded a program called the Bright Young Minds. Um, it's a program for African-Australian youth uh, within the northern suburbs of Melbourne. Um, and then we've got the young people aged 10 to 16, um, engage them in sort of educational programming, um, cultural programming and kind of backed that up with uh, a sports component, uh, whether it was futsal, basketball, swimming, um, to kind of integrate them more in, into society, but also try to boost their academic performances um, through the increased access to sports. Because uh, we found that young um, young males or young African males um, are very into sports and there can be a lot of educational barriers for them when it comes to that confidence building, um, having a mentor or or positive role models. And we thought that we would bring mentors into the program as well um, to, to speak to the kids about their journey. Uh, but then also kind of the better you do or the more effort you put into the academic component, the more game time you would get when you play sports. Um, so that was a really successful program. We started off with 10 kids. Um, and within a year, we had 42 young people in the program. Uh, we had a girls program, boys program. We uh, qualified to become the semi-finalists of Victoria Young Achievers Award. Um, and we've got a few other awards um, along the way. So it was a really amazing um, opportunity and really amazing experience for me to start my own program, basically manage it. Um, and then while I was doing that, I met the general manager of Western Bulldogs Community Foundation through 
a leadership program that I was uh, participating in. And um, as a mentor, we caught up for coffee. Um, and it was more so around asking for advice um, for that program, how I can improve it. And he was kind of impressed about the effort that I put in um, without any um, grants or any sort of support financially to build that program and, and to see the growth that he had within a year. Um, they had an opportunity coming up and he asked me to apply for it and to see how I go. Um, and then I applied for it, went through the interview process with 78 other people. And um, thankfully I was uh, able to, to get the role. Had my uh, round two interviews on, on my birthday, so that might've been the lucky charm. Do you say you beat 78 other people for the role? Yeah. Wow, that's that's fantastic, and um, it's always great to obviously hear about where people have come from and and how they end up in the sports industry. Because not everyone, you know, goes to uni and starts, you know, looking at sport and rec management or yeah. sport and physical education. It's it's always it's amazing where obviously life can take us. Because you know, you were stuck. You said you were studying. Um, science and ended up working yeah. in, at an AFL club, which you probably didn't expect. And um, yeah, that um, community work that you've done, that's very impressive. And I think the Bulldogs Thank have you. definitely got a good one there. Um, you said you worked for Melbourne Victory. How do you find the differences? This is a question that I'm throwing a curveball at you. Um, but yeah. how do you find the differences between working for um, an A-League club versus an AFL club? Yeah, I think there's definitely differences and different similarities. Um, I think the key difference is probably the size of the staff was the biggest shock that I kind of had when um, at Victory was kind of like I was in a team of four um, and then we had about maybe 40, or probably even 30 um, admin staff across the board besides the football department. Um, and then they were kind of all fit into one space. And then now when you come into the AFL sport, we've got about three levels of admin staff um, in terms of um, the, we've got a whole maybe 60 staff members on, on level one and then you go up to level two and three and there's more staff across the board. We've got about almost 100 staff outside of the football department. Um, so I think just the, the sheer size um, of it is, is, is massive. But when it comes to um, the purpose of it, I think especially in the community departments, um, there are a lot of synergies in terms of using the sport as a tool but not literally all, it all being about the sport. It's more about how do we sort of improve a community's experience using sport? How do we increase social connection? How do we improve the confidence of these young people um, use, using these sports? Because sports is a, is a universal language um, which, which can break down a lot of barriers. So I think that the beauty of it is, is the power that the sport has. But then also you look at the attraction levels that it has from different communities that sports is more, glo uh, soccer is more global. Um, they both called football, so I'll just refer to it as soccer. For now, um, so soccer is a lot more global. So then you do have those um, diverse communities that just understand it like that because they've kind of probably maybe played it in their in their culture and back in their country. Um, and then you come to footy, and then you're teaching um, someone from maybe you know Somali background or Sudanese background or something how to handball probably for the first time um, ever. So there is that sort of introduction level that you have to kind of win them over into the sport. But then once they start playing, they absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, so there, there is that, that difference in engagement levels. Yeah, um, it's funny when you touch on soccer or football being a yeah. obviously a global sport. I was lucky enough at the start of 2019 to, to go to Arsenal and work in their community programs and you know basically any country that you go to, football, soccer is a I suppose universal language, like everyone's playing soccer. Um, can you tell us about the different community programs that are run by the Western Bulldogs? Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, we've got kind of a three stream system um, that kind of focuses on, on different um, ages and different sort of programming. Um, the first thing I'll touch on is, is the health and wellbeing stream, which is kind of, as the name says, focuses very much on, on, the, on health and wellbeing. Um, and they have two uh, sort of flagship programs that are called Sons of the West and Daughters of the West. Um, they're 10-week health programs for males and females, um, ages 18 to 90 plus, but generally the main demographics are in that 40, 50 mark. Um, and they get about 600 participants throughout the year. And their programming is uh, 
about sort of educational component where they talk about maybe nutrition or they talk about uh, men's health or women's health. And then on the back of that, they get sort of physicians and exercise scientists to come and do some different physical activities um, on, on varying levels. Um, and they've also got the Leadership Academy, which sort of grabs all the graduates of that program into uh, a leadership sort of program where they can kind of learn about how to go back into their communities and, and affect that in, in a positive way where they can go into volunteering or start their own programs or come back into our community foundation and volunteer there as well. Um, so that's the health and wellbeing stream. We've got our diversity stream, which does the um, cold play junior and senior programs, uh, which is kind of for migrant and refugee background people in, in partnership with the Western English language schools. So they kind of use the sport, as I said earlier, as a tool to kind of break down a few social barriers, um, help build integration into, into the Australian community and culture. Uh, Cause I think one of, one of the common things that you have is if you go, if you go to a bar or, or just out, out of public, someone might, you know, you meet someone new, one thing they might ask you is what team do you go for? You know, so kind of helping them have a team that assimilate with that they kind of um, support where they can just answer and say, oh, Western Bulldogs might be able to help them build a bit more connection with the general um, broad, broader community, but also helping them meet new people and, 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 and have some good connections. It's kind of the main outcomes of that program. Um, and then we don't just necessarily focus on footy in that program. We also have partnerships with um, Netball Victoria. We have partnerships with lacrosse, um, it, with uh, various other A-League soccer clubs. Um, so we do teach a few other different sports each term. We do switch it up for them. Um, but yeah, so, so it's not necessarily about the sport, but it's about what the sport can do um, for, for, for those communities. Uh, we do also have employment tours for um, the diversity stream. And the stream that I work in um, as a youth development coordinator is a youth stream. And we've got a few different programs. So we've got three feeder programs, uh, which is the Nali During, which is an indigenous leadership program for young people 13 to 15 years old. Um, and we've got leadership content within that program that is backed up by also some cultural learnings as well. For example, if they do a, a arts or a self-expression um, workshop, which tries to build their confidence, talk, tells them about public speaking and how to understand their emotions, we'll back that up with maybe a cultural art session where they get to draw, um, you know, something that's, that's cultural specific or we get indigenous hip hop projects to come and do a cultural dance session with them. We kind of back the education with some theory that's um, cultural specific. Um, we've got our Leaders of the Pack program, which is a multicultural focused program, which is open to um, all diverse communities. Um, and it's separate for males and females in, in the way that we deliver it. And it's in partnership with schools and local councils. Um, so that's our second sort of feeder program. And our third one is the Gold Mentoring Program, which is our African leadership program. And um, as I said in the name, Gold Mentoring, mentoring is, is, is the key aspect in that program that we get AFL players, AFLW players, community mentors to come into every single workshop and actually mentor the young people. Um, so similar educational programming with the leaders of the pack and now the during, but they also get backed up with a bit more mentoring aspect of it where they get to break down some barriers. For example, they might meet the actual footy players and ask them, okay, so you play sport, what else do you do? And then they would be surprised to learn that um, that the, you know, even though, even though this is a full footy superstar you see him on TV, he still has a family that he cares about, or he studies um, in his spare time, or he might, you know, do some arts or poetry, or might play games, um, and that they're just human as well, like everyone else, and kind of helps the young people realize that um, that there's so much to, to a person other than just what you see on the outside, and ho and hopefully helps build a bit of a bit of a confidence for them as well. And that program is off the back of our African Action Plan. Uh, which we're trying to actually purvey more positive um, images of, of the African community to kind of combat the negative um, stereotypes that we see on the media um, and, and, and elsewhere too. Um, and, and, and the young people in our programs are absolutely amazing. And you see them grow so much within those um, few months of the programs. And those three feeder programs are for our sort of diverse or, or disadvantaged communities to hopefully build their confidence up and create more opportunities for them to enter programs and hopefully feed into our flagship program, which is the Youth Leadership Project. So Youth Leadership Project is a six month program, a lot more intensive in terms of the leadership content. Um, and then the young people uh, are 14 to 16 years old. Um, not only do they undergo the, a leadership project, which is a bit more um, intense in terms of the content, but also they do a social impact project. So they actually develop 
um, a program, whether they deliver it in schools as an event or as a fundraiser within their local communities, but also um, look at how they can impact their own community. And some of the great examples are that last year we had uh, three girls working together in, in our Ballarat cohort that actually designed a book um, about anxiety, um, illustrated it, wrote the whole story, printed it all out, and actually started donating it to libraries afterwards, uh, which is absolutely amazing. We had another young um, girl within the Pyrenees Shire Council who raised seven thousand dollars for Drive July um, as a part of a social impact project. So we've had some amazing um, high high achievers in the program. So it's a bit more um, in depth um, look into leadership. So that's that's our programs. We've got a lot of programs. Um, and we've got ten staff members. So um, we work really hard to ensure the highest quality. Yeah, that's obviously really for someone who's worked in a AFL community system. Um, I find that stuff really interesting and it's obviously the clubs follow you know, when our ports sort of have their um, we've got our CYP program which focuses on uh, health, healthy eating and good lifestyles and then we've got our power to end violence program which obviously looks at uh, violence against women um, and then we've got our empowering youth program which look um, we work in uh, high schools um, with, I suppose, children that are slightly disengaged and try and get them to, um, you know, use football, as you said, as a tool rather than the sole, I suppose, the sole principle, I guess. Um, do you find that because obviously Victoria, you know, massive for, for AFL, there's 10 clubs, in Victoria, do you find yourself sometimes competing with other AFL clubs to get, I suppose, the community exposure that you're wanting? Um, I think there's two really key aspects to this is that one is that the AFL, in a sense, is very different to the A-League. Um, working at Melbourne Victory, there's kind of no real territorial barriers. You can kind of go anywhere within, within, within Victoria. And then you'd have the two main clubs how to compete for, for schools, compete for community organizations, compete, compete for local sporting clubs. Um, in the AFL, we've got what's called the Next Generation Academy. Um, and that's kind of where um, clubs can kind of have programming for young people from multicultural backgrounds and indigenous pro programs to have access to footy and, and kind of like a talent identification uh, uh, pathway um, for the young people. And that kind of those barriers that the AFL has, has created for each club or zones um, kind of eliminates that whole battle for schools or territory. So we've actually got probably the biggest t space um, or, or zone within the AFL or within at least Victoria that we've got all the suburbs within the Western um, suburbs of Melbourne besides Wyndham. And then we go through all the way through to Ballarat, Moorabool, um, and all the way out to Warrnambool and, and, and the border of South Australia. So we've got the, the probably the biggest uh, region to work with and then we don't have to compete with other AFL clubs for in-school programs or, or kind of recruiting for our so that kind of eliminates the the need for um, that, that sort of comp competition or, or trying to battle for um, areas and number two I think uh, programs are very different and unique to most AFL community departments I think um, we focus a lot more on leadership on capacity building um, rather than going into schools, rolling out footies, doing handballs and kicks and um, those other sort of um, engagement programs. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a massive point of difference. Yeah. Um, next question I'm going to ask you is um, how much work do the players do in the community? Obviously, when I was at Port Adelaide, um, first and second year players were, um, as part of their contracts, were obviously required to do a lot more community work than the senior players just to obviously, you know, get the exposure with public speaking and things like that. Um, so how much, um, you know, work in the community do the, the Bulldogs players do? Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, that similar system is kind of in place for Western Bulldogs. And I kind of believe they might be across the board. Um, so we've got first to third year players that are kind of uh, designated um, hours to, to, to be involved in, in, in our community programs. Uh, but then we do have those senior players as well that are really keen um, to jump into jump into programs. I think um, one thing that's, that's really amazing, especially in, in the gold mentoring program, the players uh, sacrifice um, a couple of hours a week to be there at the, at the sessions, 
um, to build those connections with young people. Um, so sort of sometimes just playing Uno games or actually doing some of the content with them or you know doing little challenges like a balloon drop and actually participating alongside them and, and, and actually really building that mentorship um, and, and answering any questions of the young people. They do a really amazing job of that, but also other programs, for example, Sons of the West, where a player might go to their cooking session and actually cook with a participant. So I think our players really do an amazing job in, in getting involved in the community. Um, and and then most of the time they put their hand up for that. Um, outside of just the general um, designated players. Yeah, that's obviously good to hear that the players are giving back to the community. Obviously, they're really good role models for, for people in society. Um, do you have any plans to introduce any new programs um, at the Community Foundation in the next one to two, year, uh, one to two years, uh, post-COVID-19, obviously? Yeah, I think... Um... I think we've, we've got a lot of programs, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, that we're currently doing. And I think most of our programs are kind of established and might have been around for, for, for a few years. I think Sons of the West has been around for almost seven years or more. Um, so I think probably not to looking at creating brand new programs. Um, we're looking at really solidifying the ones that we have and, and make sure the outcomes of them are absolutely amazing, and keeping that consistency. Um, but I think one thing that might happen is that we might be shifting. Um, to a digital sense, because obviously because of the lockdown, a lot of isolation um, is, 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 is an issue within the community, um, regardless from young people to, to, to the elderly. So we're trying to shift some of our programs into online delivery um, as a part of our digital transformation strategy, where we're trying to increase that social media um, connection with young people, build uh, bi-weekly webinars to um, discuss certain topics and, and engage an audience, but also deliver some of our core programs in an online sense for the next few months to keep that, that engagement and, and positive interaction with um, our, our community members. Um, but I feel like that might have a knock-on effect where we actually look at continuing that in a sense when we go back to face-to-face -face delivery, still having that digital component because of every, everything becoming more digital, the young people are, are more and more on their phones, on their computers, all their homework, um, is, is done through their laptops or, or computers these days. So um, I think that definitely will be that in continuation of digital delivery. Uh, but I don't think we're going to be maybe making too many new new programs. Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, funding, um, if you were to establish new programs, fund, getting funding is obviously a really key part of that. And obviously, um, you know, the AFL clubs wouldn't be able to do what they do in the community without, you know, funding and external backing. So, um, yeah, it sounds like you've already got a, a nice number of programs already. And obviously to make sure that they stay um, consistent, sustainable and actually have a, a really good impact in the community is obviously going to be really important. How can people get involved with the community programs at the Western Bulldogs, whether it's, you know, a potentially casual job, volunteer, um, those kinds of, um, I suppose, areas. Yeah, hundred percent. I think we've got, um, our website has, has a excellent, um, expression of interest, um, website there. If you can, I can send you the link afterwards, if you want to add it to sort of the, the description of, of this video. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, if you could fill that into, even get involved in programs, get involved in volunteering, um, and you can write exactly which programs that you want to get involved in. Uh, we've also got all of our socials on Facebook, um, Instagram, and, and Twitter, which are all Western Bulldogs Community Foundation, and you can reach us um, on those um, networks as well. Um, and yeah, if anyone uh, reaches to you after this video, you can always uh, email me, and I'm happy to help out with that as well. Yeah, that's, that's obviously... Um... Uh, volunteering is obviously really important for people who are looking to make their mark in the sports industry and get connections. So um, as I tell everyone, it's amazing where volunteering can take you and any opportunities that you can get while you're, you're studying or you're just out of school, um, highly recommend that you jump on those. So Lim, thank you so much for joining us here on Sports Isolated today. We greatly appreciate your time and um, I've really enjoyed this interview, getting to learn about all the different programs that the Western Bulldogs are doing in the community. It sounds like you're doing a great job. So thank you very much for um, your time. Greatly appreciated. No, thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed being on this um, 
podcast or YouTube channel. And I think um, you, you've got a bright future ahead of you in this space. Yeah, thank you so much. For those of you who are watching at home, thank you very much for tuning in. Please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next video.